In this video I'll be showing you how you can turn your music in a Logic project into a playable music file, like an mp3 or a WAV file, sometimes called a WAV file. So here I've got the instrumental piece that I was working on previously, and what I want to do is turn this into a music file that I could play in iTunes, etc. So what you need to do first is you need to set the parameters of what section of the project you want to convert into a music file. And the way that you do that is the same way that you would go to Looper project like how I demonstrated in the video where I put together this tune. So I'll set up the parameters now. And if you were exporting a track with a mind to having it mastered, uh, then you would give yourself a bit of extra space, because things like trimming the start and end of a track tend to be done in the mastering stage. So maybe something like that. But if you just want to export a really quick mp3 for yourself or to show your friends or something, then it doesn't really matter so much, I guess, as long as you're covering what you want to be covered in the track. So I'll just trim that down a bit now. And then what you want to do is go to File, then Bounce, and then Project or Section. And that will come up with this screen here. So there's a few different options. Now I would generally export tracks one of two ways. The first being a WAV file or WAV file, um, and the second being an MP3 file. So WAV files are higher quality, but they also take up more space. MP3s are compressed files um, and lower in quality, but they take up a lot less storage space. So I'm going to start off by showing you how to complete the settings for exporting a WAV file. Um, and then following on from that, I'll show you how you can bounce an MP3 file by itself. Um, but we're going to start off with the, the WAV file here. So the first thing you want to do is make sure PCM there is ticked. And then we're going to choose WAV file on the file format. And here we're going to keep this at, or rather change it to 16-bit. And that's because if you want to upload it anywhere like SoundCloud or, or YouTube or put it on a CD, it needs to be 16-bit if it's a WAV file. Um, if you were exporting the mix um, to be mastered or sent off for mastering, um, you would do 24-bit, which is what we've um, originally recorded in. And then the required reduction to the 16-bit would happen at the end of the mastering process when you're exporting the track then but we're just going to change this to 16-bit. So sample rate, you can just leave that as it is. Generally, if you're recording instruments or microphones, you want to make sure that you bounce at the same rate that you record at. And this is just one of the default levels. And then moving on to file type, you can just keep that at interleaved, that's fine. And then on dithering, you want to do power one dithering because we're reducing this from 24 bit to 16 bit. Now, if you were keeping it at 24 bit, you would click none on that one. Um, but because we're reducing the bit rate, we need to take this down a notch. And where it says mode on uh, the left here, so there are two options real-time and offline. So the difference here is that the real-time bounce exports the track in obviously real-time. So it will actually play the track out loud for you in its entirety. And at the same time it does that, it will export. So it will export as it goes along. Um, the offline bounce just does it in seconds. There isn't really a difference in quality in the two. Um, you can use either one of these. Um, I guess an advantage of doing a real-time bounce is it kind of forces you to have one final listen to the track as it's exporting. So if you notice any final mistakes that you haven't uh, picked up before, you can you can rectify them. Um, but if the track is fully checked over anyway, which I strongly recommend you doing before you even think about bouncing really, then you can just do an, an offline bounce. It doesn't really matter. The normalize option, you can just turn that off because if you're happy with how you've done your mix, you don't need that, that extra processing or, or normalization. So now on to actually bouncing the tracks themselves. Um, so if you go up here, you can see that you can tick 
uh, more than one option. So you can bounce a WAV file and an MP3 file at the same time. Um, so that means you'll end up with two music files of a different file format. Um, if you wanted to, um, you could just do an MP3 only. Uh, so you could do that instead. MP3s are the simplest and quickest option because you don't really need to worry about any of this stuff on the right here. Um, the only thing you've got to really do is whether you want to do it in real time or uh, or offline in terms of the bounce and whether you want to normalize it or not. Um, if you want to just save a really quick rough mix of something or send a sort of rough mix over to someone via email or your smartphone then mp3 is fine, that'll do the job. Um, but for the purposes of just showing you how it works um, I'm going to do two bounces, um, two at the same time, so WAVE and MP3. So I've got those both ticked, so if I click Bounce, that'll encourage me to uh, save it somewhere. So I'm just going to save it on the desktop, I'll click Bounce. And then that should have worked, so if I just uh, come out of Logic here, those two music files are on my desktop. So the WAV file and the MP3 file. So as I said before, um, WAV files are better quality than MP3, but they do take up more space. Um, if you are uploading something more permanent, let's say if you're uploading a track to SoundCloud or YouTube, I would upload the WAV file. If you just want to email or send something quickly to someone, I would probably just stick with the MP3. Um, so you can send those over email and WhatsApp, etc. in almost no time at all. And also it won't clog up yours or anyone else's device storage. Um, sometimes if I've got some quick demos that I've made and I just want to stick them on my phone to listen to when I'm out and about, I'll just do an MP3. Um, because I might not necessarily need them to be of superior audio quality at that time. It's quick and it doesn't max out my storage capacity as quickly. But let's say you've got a, a final mix that you're going to send off for mastering, um, then you must make sure it's the WAV file and not an MP3 file um, because the WAV is, is, is the better quality. So if you're looking to professionally release any tracks, um, always make sure that is the WAV file. 